Well, today on Nation of Window Cleaners Podcast, we are talking all about finding your customer, how to find them, who are they, why you want to find them. Either way, if you're in window cleaning or any service business whatsoever, it's going to be a good episode. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you enjoy it. There is six and a half, wait, yeah, six and a half years, almost six. There's a lot of episodes, hundreds, in fact, of episodes, uh, almost 200 hours of podcasts. So go back, binge and watch and listen and everything. It's anywhere podcasts are found. And of course, on YouTube and the WCR channel. If it's not your first time here, thank you for coming back. I want to start the show off by saying a few shout outs. I want to say thank you to Michael Cruz, uh, Scott Truelove, and Dave Thompson. Those are just some of the amazing people who buy through me. I just really want to say genuinely thank you to you guys, um, especially you three. Thank you. Um, Anybody else who knows I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com, we'll get to that shameless plug later. But let's just jump right into the episode and we are we're talking today about finding your customer like how do you find who you're selling to unfortunately a lot of businesses we just try to like sell to everybody and that's cool i would never turn somebody away right i would never uh have somebody who wants my services and actually say no i don't want that but to find and to advertise to you have to understand the truth about business and that Every single person out there is not your 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 customer. They're just not. There is no um, one product that everybody wants, or that everybody's a customer for, or that everybody is buying. And with that being said, we all need water to drink, but yet there's you know fifty water brands. Why is that? Because each water brand has their own niche or their own feeling or their own vibe or their own whatever, and that is what they're doing. That's what they're selling to. So if you are in window cleaning or anything else, don't try to sell to everybody. So with that being said, you have to find who it is that you're selling to. I I know, I mean, jump on any forum or group or something where people are really proud of what they're doing and they put something out there and you kind of do the whole face palm shake your head kind of thing and it's just that some people will put every service that they offer on every piece of literature that they are their vehicle wraps their door hangers they're they're putting 30 things no one is caring no one is reading everything no one cares about your business like you do so don't put all that information out there you you can't you can't sell somebody lawn care if they don't have a lawn. Like if they live in an apartment, they're not your customer. So why sell them lawn care, but yet they have windows? Like you can't sell somebody everything. So I see that's one of the big things that I see people really messing up on is that they try to put everything out there and they think, hey, if I put five services down, window cleaning, pressure washing, gutter cleaning, house washing, and roof cleaning, that I'll get people interested in roof cleaning. Well, very seldomly, yes. No one is going to read through all of those other services to get to the one that they want. They're going to look at the first one and go, window cleaning, no, don't need that. If you did an ad just for roof cleaning, it would 100% be better than doing an ad for window cleaning, pressure washing, roof cleaning, gutter cleaning, all that stuff. And you say, why are, how is that possible? This ad that I just did with 10 services listed, I'm touching 10 different people, no matter what they need. No, because somebody who is looking for window cleaning may not be looking for roof cleaning. They may hate window cleaning so much they have to find somebody specific who's amazing at window cleaning and they see you do everything. You're not just a window cleaner. A jack of all trades is the master of none. So putting everything out there is just an awful way to advertise. Now, with that being said, we have to know who we're speaking to. 
You can't put everything down. People, I, I understand the concept of why somebody wants, well, I want to make sure that they know I do gutter cleaning. Yeah, but no one is calling you for that gutter cleaning unless you're targeting the gutter cleaning. What you can do is upsell or get somebody who's interested in your bread and butter. If it's window cleaning, that's what you do. That's what's on the side of your truck. And then you upsell all the other services. But you can't put every service on there because then it gets become noise. And it, once it's noise, nobody listens. So let's find who our customer is. It matters who your customer is. I've said this before in um, Hey Now that I did on TikTok. And uh, uh, I know people razzed about the, the language thing. But understand that if I'm speaking Spanish to someone and somebody else is trying to speak to me in English, but I don't know English and they don't know Spanish, our communication is very hard. That's fair, right? I have to know who I'm talking to in order to talk their language. So understanding who your customer is or finding who your customer should be is how you advertise. And I'll tell you a theory on avatar. The avatar is who you are mainly talking to. Now I'll give you a, a, an example. My avatar is somebody who's between the ages of 35 and 57 years old. They are female. They have two dogs. They have two kids, uh, college age, um, potentially high school, college age. Uh, they are a middle income with disposable income. Uh, they usually have newer cars. Um, and they have a um, corporate husband. And the wife is usually... Uh, stay at home or part-time work. All those things that you said, say, well, yeah, okay, that you just described somebody, okay, but I got lots of other customers. Yes, but who's your majority of your customers? Now, if I have 50% of the people that I do services for are that, that I just explained, that's who I'm talking to. Now, I can talk to the other people and they'll still get something from it. But remember, I want to talk to someone, not to everyone. If I talk to everyone, it's just as a thing. It's just an open ad and it's just that, it's an ad. If I talk to someone, there's a connection. We've all heard in advertising the difference between the word like you and the word of everybody or all of you or any of that stuff. If I am specific, we connect. If I'm not specific, I'm just telling you things, right? Everybody in the United States could benefit from this. Okay, neat. Am I part of it? Yeah, but they're talking to everybody else. If I say house owners in the fat goose subdivision, I'm speaking to only those people. Whoa, that's me. You have to talk to somebody and knowing who you're majorly talking about or to is key. Now, I know you sell lots of services. I did lots of services. In fact, we did a, um, a survey one time and I thought, man, I was really good. I, we stuffed, I did email blasts and we did mailings and postcards and I did extra services in every envelope, 10 services down. We did a, a survey, like a questionnaire and our average of all of our return surveys, which uh, I want to say was like 70, 70 return surveys, I think, 70 something just in there. It was two, two services out of the 10 people knew I did. Our bread and butter for my company was window cleaning. That's what I advertise. I upsell the rest. Now that I know my avatar, I know who I'm talking to. So if that person is who I'm talking to. I know all of the things that they like. I know how I can connect with them by speaking to a specific person. Now, with that being said, if I use words like all or everybody or all over, I'm still communicating and I'm still doing that and I'm still letting people know, but it's not having that connection. But if I can connect 
with 50% of the people and then everybody else just hears it like a normal ad, I'm still connecting with people really, really good. Now, this is the same reason why if you are a window cleaner who does pressure washing or does all that other stuff, on the side of your truck it says window washing or window cleaning, argue all you want. That's what the big letters are. It's got to draw you in. Oh, window cleaning. Oh, yeah. Oh, window cleaners. What other? Now I can find what other services. I could find your website. I could do whatever. I'm signing up for window cleaning. I can upsell the other services. But if I speak to that one person, I can get a better connection on one service than I can even if I list 10 services. I'm not getting more customers. I'm getting less customers because the people who want a window cleaner aren't finding me because I do 10 services. Same thing with avatars. Now, as ridiculous as an avatar is, your customer, or finding who your customer is, part of this is something where when I ask somebody that or they try to think of that, they just come up with it like that. And they go, oh, uh, my avatar, yeah, it's like a, a lady, you know, um, who is, uh, you know, like 40, maybe 40, I don't know, something like that. You know, they got like a two-story house, you know. Okay take some time to do the research to find who that is. There are so many facets. Now, I'm gonna jump off this real quick and talk targeting. When you're targeting like Facebook ads and why those ads work so stinking amazing or just any ads in general is if you can target people, again, you know who you're talking to. If I can target somebody who's in a certain age or I could target somebody in a certain income or I could target somebody with a certain size house, or a new side house, or the new construction of a house. All of those things, the more targeted I am, the more specific my customer can be, the better my ROI is. That's fair in everything. EDDM has the lowest ROI because you just give it to everybody, but it's also the cheapest, right? When you buy a list or specifically send to people, say you send to existing customers, your ROI will always be better. It's why SEO is so stinking amazing. It's because I'm getting my website to be found by the people who are looking for me. SEO, right? It's why SEO is the number one thing you could possibly ever do for your company. But with all that being said, when I do targeting and everything else, I need to know who I'm trying to target. You can't target a thing. Like if I'm gonna send a you know cruise missile to, you know, from Iraq, and I'm going to send it over to the United States. I'm not just aiming for the United States. I'm aiming for a city. I'm aiming for a target. Probably I have like, you know, this square block is where I'm going to aim. Targeting. When we go back to who our customers are or how we find our customers in general, we need to know who we're talking to. Let's talk income. How do you know that income level? Well, that's on some... Uh, census data in the area, in the neighborhoods. I can find all that. Why would I even need to know that? Because a lot of us, when we start in window cleaning, here's the biggest thing, is that people start and they go, man, I got all these giant houses. Man, there's so many mansions. I'm going to hit those. Cool. I don't like those customers. I would absolutely do work for them. I do lots of work in big houses. I do work even in estates. You know, the house that their like guest house is bigger than any house I've ever lived in. Their estate is like, you know, a small hospital. But that's not my bread and butter. That's not your bread and butter, I'm guessing. Bread and butter is that job that's just the easiest for the best amount of money. I make so much money per hour on this one with the least amount of headaches and they're grateful. We look at our cookie cutter houses. That's where we make it. 27 to 3,200 square feet cookie cutter house. And when I say cookie cutter, people go, well, that's not really cookie. No, I mean, new subdivision plops up. All the houses look the same. There's like three colors. You know, they all look kind of the perfect. That house is people who just got into the area where their disposable income is now there. They are excited because they don't have old money and you don't work for them. They're just happy that somebody's doing services and they can't believe they got window cleaning. That's the cookie cutter house. That's that person. You see the avatar starts to form itself. My customer, who my customer is, finding who that is, starts to form itself. I like that person. 
I like that customer who just got into, I have a little bit extra money, I'm starting to treat myself, because guess what? That's where you're getting tips, and tips are great, but that means they love what you're doing, they're appreciative, they don't talk down to you, they're just happy the service is done, they're gonna tell everybody about it because they're partially bragging that they're there, and they're also friends with people in the neighborhood and people in the same income level. Like, what is that income level? If you make a million dollars a year, cool. Like, I, I, I would still do your house, but you're not my target. My target ends up being closer to the household income of like 150000 to $212,000, $218,000. That was mine. Yours might be different. That doesn't mean that anybody who makes less or anybody who makes more, I'm not targeting, but I'm trying to speak to you. You're listening to this podcast right now. I've hopefully speaking in terms that connect with just you and it's just me and you listening, but thousands of people will listen to this. How do you talk to thousands of people, but try to connect with each one on their own level? So we got all that. Income, great. I know with income comes size and style of house. I know neighborhoods. I know types. I know years of oldness in the house. I don't want a house necessarily that's built in the 50s. Would I do it? Absolutely. But that's not my target. My target is this particular one, newer house. Usually under that nine years. That tells me what kind of windows there are. That tells me how fast I can do it. I know pricing, I know where they're at, I know what they're doing, and I could tell them all about my other services, and because they're getting into starting to do things or have things done for them, I may be able to get in on that. And I'm starting to see where my avatar makes sense. I think your avatar needs to make sense for you, your area. When I say this stuff is not meant to change any of your avatar because your area is different than the next guy. Your area is different than mine. But finding who that is, is finding who your customer is. Hobbies, hobbies are a big part of that. Do they golf? Do they hike? Are they outdoors? Do you live on the lake? Do you live by the lake? Do people like water sports and kayaking? And Are you in California? There's different things they do there than there are in the middle of Montana. Finding their hobbies doesn't make sense until you understand that when I want to connect to somebody, I have to find what they talk about. Now, let me give you a dumb example because I'm great at dumb examples. So if I have somebody who is, say, a golfer, that's what they're into, really big into golf in my area, golf is huge, and I start talking with golf terms or my um, ad says anything about, you know, hey, are you trying to hit 18 holes this weekend, but you just can't find the time? Let XYZ window cleaning take care of your windows and you go get a, you know, whatever. And you can go improve your handicap. That sounds ridiculous and why my window cleaning company would be talking about golf. But if that's my avatar, because of the area I'm in, people are connecting way better than if it's a huge golf area and I'm, you know, in the middle of something. I'm not anywhere by water. There's not even a lake within, you know, 100 miles. And I come on and go, well, do you like jet skiing? Well, we clean your windows. You go jet ski. People would be like, eh, what is this guy like this? Now, obviously that's a drastic on the other side, but you can see how quickly it disconnects with people. How quickly it disconnects with people. You know what I said my, my avatar at age-wise. Say yours is 40, just whatever, 43. Pick, a, pick it, doesn't matter. If you said, now that you're retired, why clean your windows when you could be playing shuffleboard? Now, when you tell me it does not matter on who I'm talking to and I need to talk to everybody, this is why you don't put 10 services on there. That didn't connect with anybody. Did it connect with you? Are you retired? Do you play shuffleboard? Maybe you play shuffleboard. I've played it on cruise ships. It's actually pretty fun. I'm not hating on that, but I'm not retired. You're probably not retired. 
Maybe you are and this is a side hustle. If it is, awesome. See how when I talk to somebody, it connects. And segue of the year, I want to connect with you. I am a rep for windowcleaner.com and this podcast is brought to you by me. I do these podcasts. Hopefully you get something out of it. I know, I mean, a ton of you message me every week just to be like, yo, dude, I got something, man. Thank you. And that means the world to me. I just sit in front of this, um, you know, I sit in front of a green screen um, and uh, in front of my laptop and in my office and I can't see any of you. So anytime people like order from me and they're like, dude, I love the podcast, man. I just want to give back. It is literally like a high five. It's literally like somebody just being like, thank you. And that to me means the world because I don't get to hear that all the time. I put content on, I put it out for a long time. And there's a lot of you that say it. And I know there are thousands of you that will listen to this. You know, it's an awesome opportunity for me to do. And if you ever do want to do anything back or just want to make my day, that's how you can. I don't have a Patreon, uh, but I put orders in at windowcleaner.com. And uh, it costs you nothing extra for me to do that. And I get credit for it. It's literally a behind the scenes thing on my end. I make it absolutely easy. You can text me, call me, whatever. 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. You can call me, text me, whatever. Just look, save this cart and then be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. And I'll go, awesome. You're still at 123? I'll run it. I'll save the card. I have the address, everything. And... I get credit and it would be absolutely amazing and it makes me genuinely happy so thank you to everybody especially those people who put orders in with me already and i want to be able to say your name in the shout out so please let me put your orders in um also go and get a subscription to the american window cleaner magazine you know i talk about all the time and there are a lot of you who do not have the magazine yet and i would genuinely love for you to be able to experience the magazine and get into this culture of window cleaning and just get into nerding out. This is your college. This is what you're doing and you are going to the next level. You're going to blow this thing up and the way you do that is to be bigger and better than everybody else. Getting that knowledge, you're listening to a podcast. Your next next guy's not. You're absorbing things. Not that I know everything, but maybe you pick something up that makes you think and you decide to do something different that blows you to the next level. That's where something like the American Window Cleaner magazine is. It's been around since 1986, but the magazine itself with articles and everything gets you thinking on top of everything else. New products, reviews, everything. American Window Cleaner Magazine, go get that. Uh, Also, if you haven't yet gotten uh, subscribed to my personal YouTube channel, do that. I genuinely would like to, just WCR Nation. Uh, one of the videos that's actually coming out this week is all on these, which are um, window decals, uh, custom window decals. So if you want to watch that stuff, go and subscribe. Anyway, back to the show, shameless plug over. I got hobbies, I got income, I got gender, I got all of that stuff as to who I'm talking to. Let's think home life. What do they like to do in their home life? Are they family people? Do they want to spend more time? Do they have a home theater? Do they like movies? Do they have super active kids that they're going all over? Are they running to football and ballet? And what is their home life like? Again, if you've ever had an ad or something talk to you and they're like, hey, Window cleaners, if you are, you know, stuck at that $100,000 mark and you want to blow that, like, how many times have you heard something where they just keep it like, man, this is right. This is made just for me. This thing was tailored to me. They don't know who you are. They just know there's lots of people like you. It connects. You listen. If I said, you know, are you tired of your Bugatti breaking down on you? Well, I just turned away everybody and not one of you is listening because it doesn't matter to any of you. Maybe. If you have a Bugatti, call me. I want to drive it. Uh, But it disconnects. We try to get the closest to that connection, right? Home life. If they're in sports and the kids are busy and they're running all over, then talk about that, right? 
And are some people that aren't in kid that don't have kids or don't have kids in sports? Yeah. But again, a slight disconnect is better than complete far away. I want to talk to the most people. The most people. How about pets? One of the things with the CRM that a lot of people do is they like to keep notes. And I really like to know uh, an animal's name. I like to know um, information about somebody that I can make sure that I remember if it's something big. Right? Now, I like to take the time for that. Now, CRM allows uh, tech in the field to put notes. If there's a dog or a pet that they find out that the dog's name's Rosie, put it in the CRM next time they're there. It's on the notes when they get the invoice. Oh, hey, Rosie. Oh, my gosh, you remember Rosie? Well, yeah, I talk to, you know, uh, 100 dogs a month. And yes, you've probably talked dogs also. But if you remember, remember this stuff, it's big. Maybe the last time you cleaned their windows, they were prepping for the daughter's wedding. Afterwards, you go back and you go, man, how was, you know, so last time we were here was all before the big wedding. How'd that go? Oh my gosh, can't believe, A, that you remembered it, but that's how you are knowing this stuff. And people go like, well, how am I supposed to know what, how many pets they have? Start taking notes. I know almost, almost 90% of the people I do work for have dogs, which is crazy, crazy. Why that is, I have no idea. Maybe dogs put boogers on windows a lot more and great. They help me out. But I know that. I know that because I record that. I know that because I watch that. When somebody goes, oh, I got all this stuff, you just throw it out of your head. You may be right, you may not be. You have to do the research to watch that. All of this comes together into what's important to them. And again, what's important to them matters. And that's how we're talking to people. That is literally why they're listening is because of what you're saying. You're speaking to them. Now, if they lived in a concrete box with no windows and you were like, hey, we do window cleaning, they'd be like, neat. And they would walk on. That is, again, a drastic example. But if you're talking to somebody who just doesn't need that or talk that or whatever, they're not listening. It's the same thing if I'm talking to you. And I say, hey, everybody who owns a horse, everybody who has more than 100 acres, everybody who, you know, uh, is, um, you know, seven years old, Every, and I list everything, and then the last one is everybody who owns a window cleaning business. Hey, you didn't listen to all the other things that have nothing to do with you to get to the one that says window cleaning and then go, oh, that's me. The more pieces there are that don't include you, minimize the ones that do. Again, why are you putting all the services down when not everybody, no one's reading everything. It's, they're not reading the book. They're not reading your filler words. They're not doing any of that stuff. Speak to someone for the best bang. If 65% of your work is window cleaning or, you know, more than that, which most of us are, that's what you sell, window cleaning. Do you have people who also get gutters done? Yeah, you do. But that's when you do a gutter cleaning ad, speaking to just those people. Well, yeah, but there's people out there who need window cleaning too. Of course there are, but get them in on the window cleaning up, sell them everything else. Understand who you talk to changes your ROI. When you see guys out there online and they go, yeah, man, I tried Facebook ads. They do not work. No, your ad is bad. It's garbage, hot dog water. You didn't do anything to improve your ad or change it or talk to specific people or target better or split test or any of that stuff. Every single person whose ads don't work, they didn't do it right. They put something together themselves and it looked like a hot mess who didn't talk to somebody and talk to everybody and tried to cover all bases because I got 10 services. I put it all out and they read a book and no one cares. There's ways you can do all this stuff. This is why actual ad agencies work because they do the research and the things that... If you're not researching how ads work or social media or any of this stuff, 
If you're not researching that, you don't know what it is. You don't know what makes things good. So talking in that and putting every piece out there and just trying to see what sticks does not work. You have to know who you're talking to. That's why it matters. By the way, I always like to put something in the show that if you're listening still right now, before you leave, hold on. Before you leave, I want to know that you made it this far. On YouTube, if you're listening to this, most of you are, go to YouTube on WCR's page, find this one, and just comment, topic idea, and then give me a topic idea. That way I know you made it this far, and I can get some ideas from you. See? Double whammy. And I'm talking to you. I want ideas for the show, but I also want to know you made it this far because you're awesome. If you did make it this far, sweet. Super cool. Uh, If you're going to be in the IWCA, I'm recording this the week before IWCA. I will be there in Galveston this year. Um, Hopefully, if you're there, say hi. Make a big deal to say hi because um, some of you are like, oh, you're busy. Yeah, we're always busy. That's when we go to these shows, to be busy. You don't want to just stand there. Oh, I sure hope somebody says, say hi. I want to shake your hand. I want to say what's up. I want to do all that stuff because uh, I don't get a chance to see people as much. So do that. Let me say that you're there and all that other stuff. Um, Again, I want to be a rep. Save my number, 862-312-2026. Do me the biggest solid and let me put orders in for you. Big, small, it literally does not matter. I see a lot of you end up, um, you know, I put in an order or two and then you start putting orders in yourself and I want them all. Let me have them. Ugh. Please. Also, get a subscription to the AWC magazine. It's awcmag.com forward slash sub and get a subscription. Do it. Be cool. All the cool kids are doing it. Go and get that. Um, Other than that, I hope that you know your avatar. I hope you learn who your customer is. You can find your customer. And I hope, more importantly, that you go out there and be epic.